This is Doug Mayo. I'm the Jackson County Extension Director in Mariana, Florida. Uh, we have some demonstration plots here of forage legumes. They were planted the last week of June, and we're visiting today with Ann Blunt on the last week of August to talk about their progress and their growth and how they might be helpful to livestock operations. Many folks are familiar with grasses, be it perennial or annual, but may not be as familiar with the types of legumes we can grow either for hay or forage during the summer. I'm Ann Blunt, the forage breeder for North Florida for University of Florida, and we're out in Jackson County today looking at a demonstration of summer annual legumes. Because of inexpensive nitrogen fertilizer, many of these summer legumes haven't been utilized over these last few years. But there's a resurgence in interest in cover cropping. A lot of livestock producers and wildlife fanatics are interested in summer annual legumes. One, for building up the soil. Two, as a nutritious forage for our livestock and for our wildlife. I asked two graduate students to join us today, Sarah and Val are gonna help us to take a look at the plants a little close up so you can see some of the differences. We're gonna start with iron and clay pea. So it's often called iron clay pea, but it's really iron and clay pea. It's a mixture of Southern cow pea and very, very popular over many, many years, used for forage as a hay, typically grown where corn has been harvested so that it'll grow up on the stalks and after the corn's been uh, harvested off, a lot of livestock producers will turn cattle out and let them finish consuming the stalks left over from the corn and also eat the cow pea. It works very well uh, also as a very fine hay, summer legume hay. Seed are relatively inexpensive and fairly common in the southeastern United States. The next summer legume we're gonna look at is Chinese red cow pea. So cow pea is a family of peas that have a lot of diversity in them, but some of them are more runner types like iron and clay, which is used mostly for forage or for hay. Chinese red are more bunch-like. They're a little bit shorter. They're very, very compact. And you can see the pod load has a sizable pod load because these are more for eating types. However, because of the name, it's gotten very popular for people to look at it for wildlife food plots, but you can see it's much earlier in maturity and more of what I would call a food type cowpea. So now we're gonna look at Red Ripper cowpea. Red Ripper, we believe, came into the United States maybe in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and there's been a lot of interest in this particular variety that's out on the commercial market for wildlife and for a hay crop. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller leaf than iron and clay pea. It is an intermediate between maturity for iron and clay and for the Chinese red, and it does not produce as many pods, so it's more of a forage type on the viney side and very, very productive. Very nice uh, foliage, very little disease that we're aware of. And you can see that this might fit very well also for pollinators, because if you look into the canopy, you'll actually see a number of different pollinating insects uh, using the flowers. So this is Ashenomony americana. This is probably my favorite summer legume that's an annual. Uh, it has been very popular in South Florida for very many years. It's commonly called joint vetch or sometimes deer vetch. That should give you an idea of how successful it could be in a food plot. But it is a very good summer legume well adapted throughout the state of Florida. I used to think of it as a, more of a Southern type legume, but I've seen it growing four, five, six feet tall in Jefferson County, Florida. So here it is, it's very ferny looking. If you touch it, it'll um, close its leaves. So it's like a sensitive type plant, but very high protein, excellent for wildlife, can be cut for hay, haylage. It just, ha it man it's how you manage it. The next plant we're gonna look at is hairy indigo. So if you're a row crop producer, you don't like hairy indigo. It's very hard seeded, very hard to kill. Ashenomony is also hard seeded, 
but I haven't seen it reseed very well in North Florida, where hairy indigo is well known of, of, amongst all the row crop producers. So if you're anywhere near a peanut field, a cotton field, you might want to refrain from planting uh, a hairy indigo. Hairy indigo gets its name because when cattle eat it, they develop kind of a cough. It has very fine hairs along the stems and on the leaves. And when it, it's eaten by cattle, a lot of times they'll develop a little chronic cough, but it's not detrimental to the animal. Anyway, hairy indigo, excellent for soil building. It's good at reducing nematodes in the soil. Uh, it, per, seed of it is fairly well available and um, fairly inexpensive. The next summer annual legume we're gonna talk about is forage soybean. So many of you are familiar with soybeans. Soybeans are used in a lot of food products and uh, are certainly a high protein crop. But forage soybeans are a little bit taller, a little bit leafier, fewer seed pods produced, but they make an absolutely excellent forage crop, hay crop, silage crop. It is also excellent for use for green manuring or uh, cover cropping. And it also provides a food source for many of our pollinator insects. So let me tell you a little something else about forage soybean. You can see that this soybean's been heavily grazed by deer. It is a very good source of summer protein for antler growth on deer. So when considering a forage type soybean, and in this case, this is Tyrone developed by Tom Devine at USDA, you want a plant that is indeterminate, which means that it doesn't produce its pods all at once. It produces flowers and then pods over a long period of time. This is actually uh, indeterminate group seven soybean, but it is certainly what you would want since it stays vegetative longer for wildlife use. Our next summer legume is Alice clover. So again, let's start with, it's not a real clover. It's not a true clover. You can see it's spelled with one word, Alice and clover, and that's usually an in indication that it is not a true clover. It is a summer legume that's popularly grown for hay. It was at one point grown a lot around the Gainesville area of Florida. So one little problem with Alice clover is it's very susceptible to root knot nematodes. So after years of growing this as a hay crop, the stand typically will decline because of a buildup of nematodes in the soil. Seed of Alice clover is reasonable. So uh, the cost per acre for growing this plant is uh, fairly inexpensive. And it does make a very fine hay crop that can be used for a variety of livestock and wildlife purposes. Our last plant of the summer legume category is sun hemp. This became extremely popular a few years ago, although seed costs per acre are fairly expensive. A lot of people thought it would work as a very good green manure crop. It's also been very popular for goat producers and uh, a few cattle producers. When it's grown as a hay crop, it doesn't dry down very well, so it, it, it really cannot be used in that sort of fashion. So you could use it for early grazing, but then the main problem with this plant is this is a two month old stand. It becomes lignified very, very quickly, and you can see these fibers. So let me remind you, sun hemp is in the hemp family. It's a fiber crop. And so while these leaves are very nutritious when the plant is young, the older the plant, the more lignified and the tougher the plant is. It also uh, does not flower or rarely flowers in the northern part of Florida. So you have to make sure that you buy uh, sun hemp varieties that are adapted for this region. I'd like to thank Dr. Blunt for coming and sharing with us today and showing us a little more about these different forage types. And certainly like to thank the companies that donated the seeds so we could look and compare at these different varieties. Uh, if you have questions about forage legumes or any type of forages or crop issues, contact your local county extension office.